Oh, hey. Uh, hi, welcome to Yogi's Garage. Uh, sorry, yeah, I've been kind of playing around with my dream car, McLaren SLR. Obviously, this is probably the only scale I'm ever going to be able to get it in. But um, I've been occupying my time with entertainment items, but obviously, it's time to get back to work. So this video here is basically a miscellaneous tidying items, if you will. I'm tidying up Pepper to get Pepper ready for inspection. And then after I get it inspected and get my license, I'm gonna back her in and we're gonna work on the engine as the main focus of this project. But right now, as you can see, I've got some time on my hands, but let's jump back into my magic time machine and go back a few weeks and let's cover some of the things that I tidied up on the car before I had it inspected. Oh, and uh, by the way, in case you're wondering, I did mention time machine. And uh, yes, I did go back in a time machine and grab young Yogi's facial hair and applied it to old Yogi's face. So if I do look a little bit different, it's because... Uh, I, um, I, I went back in time and, and made myself younger again. So stick around. I'll see you on the other side. So I've got a local vendor coming in to put the, the windshield in. I got it all positioned here. Uh, I'm hoping to catch some video footage of this so you can take a look and see what the process is involved. Uh, not a big deal, but hey, video content. So here we go. So if you've been following along with uh, Project Pepper here, you'll know that I have a busted windshield that has a crack all the way up the middle. Now it wouldn't be a big deal if it didn't break off the windshield, the rear view mirror itself. And I think that's probably where it started, was right about there and then the crack proceeded all the way down. I don't know, I don't care, I'm getting it replaced. The big holdup on this car was the molding, believe it or not. They had to special order that from Porsche. Porsche said they had it, then they didn't. Then they said they had it, and then they didn't. And I had to fire SafeLight. For those of you who are considering using SafeLight, don't use them. They're terrible. Customer service is awful. So if you want good quality service, find a local windshield repair company that works with your insurance and you'll be much happier. They actually work for their money and they believe in customer service. So enough said, let's get this windshield replaced so I can get this car on the road. We ought to get the rubber piece switched. Let's start it from here. Well, I tried to cut the window mm -hmm. with the molder on. So that way we might be able to reuse the molding. The molding, Around yeah. this glass, yeah. I see yeah, because so. uh, the other way. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. We gotta keep this. Now it's different. Yeah, they are little process. Oh, this thing is brutal. 
It's already dry, but uh, it's not dry enough. By tomorrow, it's going to be real dry. Good. Yeah, so, which is okay. Yeah. Hey, what's going on, guys? Check out this little trick I learned. Whoosh! Right through the glass. See that? <clears throat> I have teleportation powers. No, actually, I'm still waiting for my windshield. Yeah, I may have already released a video on that, but so what ended up happening is this glass here has a, uh, a metal trim that they didn't order and they didn't know they needed to order. So we had to reattach the old trim to the, the glass and then use a silicone or something to bond it. So it takes 24 hours to bond and then they don't have a spot for me until next week to get it reinstalled. So I decided to go ahead and take this opportunity to resolve this issue with the instrument cluster. This instrument cluster has seen better days in the sense where the connectors are pretty much tissue paper. This little shell here is what locks into this. But as you can see, it's broken and it's just, look at this. Let me move it over here so I don't get any more crap in the car but i can just barely touch it and you can see it just falls apart so i've got three of these that i need to take out the other two are being a little bit stubborn the good news is is the actual connector itself appears to be in perfect condition so i don't think i'm going to have trouble with getting it reinserted luckily i can just buy these shells and pop them on and then latch them in so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use some needle nose pliers and maybe a mechanics pick to try to pop these connectors out of their housings here so I can go get the part numbers and replace it. And then I got a couple more things that I wanna do on the instrument cluster as well. So here we go. Okay, so that wasn't too bad, pretty, pretty straightforward. The easy part is now gonna get these, these shells off of the connector. If you see that little black tab or that little opening there for the tab, that's what locks the shell into place. This thing is so brittle, I suspect that very little effort is going to be needed to pop this shell off. All right, so again, you want to push this tab in and slide it out. But in this case, this thing is damaged. I don't need to keep it, so I don't need to go through all that effort. I can just pop that off. It would have broken off anyway. And then look, comes right off. Same thing here. Take that little quote unquote safety mechanism that keeps the latch from popping off. And look at that. All right. I'm going to go get the parts for these because I don't know if you can see that, but there are little tiny part numbers on this. And this is beautiful. I should be able to get these pretty cheap, I hope. But if you look down in there, you can see all of the bits of plastic and stuff that have broken off of the instrument cluster. But luckily, the cluster itself works perfectly, so I got no issues there. So I missed him putting the window in, but check it out. Brand new glass in place, FM antenna, and a rear view mirror. All right. That's right, done by Armando with Glass Doctor. <laughs> 30 years of experience. Thank you, Armando. Sure, no problem. All right. My pleasure. All right, what you're looking at here are the outer shells to the wiring harnesses that go, that connect the instrument cluster to the car. If you recall, the ones that were in there were extremely brittle and basically just completely useless. Luckily, the pin insert itself was un undamaged, so all I needed to do was purchase new harness connectors. But anyway, this was a $75 purchase, believe it or not, for three of them. The third one is already connected. I did a trial run. They're a little snug, but they're going to work out great. All right. They have little grooves or guides on each side, and only one side has it all the way to the end to line up the track. So it's pretty self-explanatory on how they go together. It's just a matter of lining up the track. Oops, if I do it right, there. See, so they go together. You just push the wires all the way to the end and it will connect. And this takes a little bit of muscle here to 
<clears throat> squeeze it all the way in to line the pins up with the holes. So let's give it a good <clears throat> click. And then take a light and verify that you can see the pins on the other side. And yes, I can. So that's a good fit. All right, one last squeeze and then we're ready. One, two. <clears throat> Damn. Oof. And the last one. like that all right so far so good haven't had much luck getting that LCD panel replacement we may be stuck with that one the supply is uh, pretty thin out there all right I'm gonna crank this to the ignition to make sure that the lights come up they'll sound like my wipers good deal so I did get everything right, thank goodness. Let's do it. Okay, so I'm about ready to button up the front of the car here with all the wiring and things. But before I do, I gotta clearly get this thing cleaned up. I mean, you can see just some horrible staining from the rain buildup and possible um, rust. I'm gonna get all of this just cosmetically clean. Well, in the process of pulling the battery, I'm having to deal with that, what you see, and that is rust, more and more of it. Luckily, I knew that there was rust there, so I went ahead and purchased a new plate, but I'm gonna go ahead and yank that out there. But the first thing I wanna do is address the, the rust. Then I'm gonna use my rust remover that I used on the rails. I'm using the evapo rust here. What I'm just going to do is pour it directly on the bolt and soak the towel. All right, it's the next day, and the rust remover product that I used seems to have done a really good job. So I'm going to use my rocket socket. I think it's going to work okay here. I may have to go to a smaller size on some of these, but I think... Um Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the old battery tray and the new battery tray. Well, not really new. It's out of a, a junked 996. But you can tell also that, it, look, it comes... It was supposed to come with a battery brace. This helps keep the battery from sliding around or you know, popping off if you hit a big bump. So it's a safety measure, and you can see they're not there at all. The important thing is, is underneath. This here is the ceiling face to the fuel pump. And this one here is actually in not, that, in not that bad of a shape, but you can see that the rust has completely gone through. Here's a edge shot here compared to this. This one here can be spray painted black, no problem. This one here has seen better days. I may actually keep this. I don't think the rust is all that, you know, bad per se. I'm gonna hit it with a wire brush and respray it and heck, maybe I'll be able to resell it if it's in good enough shape. 
So I've already done the thread pitch and it's 1.25 thread pitch. I have my thread chaser. What I want to do is just hit the threads with some brake cleaner just to kind of blow off some of the rust bits off of it, the crumbs, if you will, of rust. And then just, you know, with a tool like this, you can use a socket or a wrench with your hands. But what you want to do is you just want to clean up the threads. Right? You don't want to have any interference with rust or dirt or grease. This is particularly important when you're working on the engine um, because, as you know, oil and carbon and all kinds of things can build up. You can hear that crunching sound as I'm chasing the threads and going back and forth with your hands too just kind of cleans the whole channel there and those are looking really good and I'm not going all the way down because I don't need to the actual tray itself is raised a bit Being that this car has been uh, exposed to quite a bit of mo moisture, I've been proactively going around and whenever I'm messing with connectors or I'm about to mess with a connector, I'm going to use my deoxid to deoxidize the connectors because I just want to eliminate as many oxidized connector issues as possible and I'd be surprised with it later on. It's a good thing I did too. It's a little oxidized in there. Give that a minute. All right, let's go ahead and reconnect everything. There you go. So one last thing, I'm gonna button this up. So a lot of this stuff you're not even gonna see, but again, like I've always said, I'm gonna see it. So I know that it was cleaned properly and it belongs to me. So this is what it's gonna look like after it's all buttoned up. Wow, just wow. After all the work that I did getting the grime and rust and dirt leaves and whatever in there this is what it looks like now i realized that it wasn't going to be visible after all the work that i did but it didn't matter to me because i knew that when i look inside it's going to be damn near spotless because that's kind of that's the kind of work that i do all right although this wasn't necessary to get the car inspected hey let's go do it 
Now, I should not get penalized for not having door panels on the inside, but we're gonna find out. And my steering's a little bit whack, but um, I looked over the requirements to pass state inspection, and they're pretty lax, let me show you. Yeah, I don't have my Camtasia working right now, but take a look at this. So this is the Texas inspection requirement. So horn, check, windshield wiper, mirror, mirror. <laughs> Steering, yes. Seat belts, yes. Brakes, wheel assembly, exhaust, exhaust system, emission systems. That's uh, the O2 sensors. Stop lamps, license plate lamp, rear red deflectors, yes. Turn signals, serial number, headlamps and window tint that needs to meet a certain requirement. So I don't even need to have a windshield, man. I just need to have a windshield wiper. So I got that. Um, so it doesn't say anywhere in here I need to have panels on the inside. So I'm gonna go take the car and get inspected and see what happens. All right, car's here for inspection. I'm at the 10 minute oil change full service express. Keeping my fingers crossed that this car will pass inspection so I can get it registered in the state of Texas. But uh, there's really not much to look over, you know, other than <laughs> one seat, one seat belt, check, check. Windshield wiper, check, check. Uh, brakes, yep. Lights work, yep, yep. So this should all, this should all work out. Bye-bye car. I'm getting pretty nervous. I've been here for about an hour. They just pulled my car in about 10 minutes ago. So it's not like, uh, you know, they found something wrong with it, but uh, you know, the longer I wait, the more nervous I get, but we're still, I'm still waiting. Well, uh, it's like I'm, you know, waiting for a newborn baby or something, but hey, this is the first step to getting my car registered so I can actually enjoy it legally on the road. So let's hope it works out. So what's the news, man? Uh, so everything else is good, but the only reason it failed is because you had two nut readies, catalytic converters on the EVAP system. Oh, shit. All that me. Yeah, so I'm back at the uh, inspection location near my house. Um, so the last time it didn't pass because I failed to do the drive cycle correctly and I should have ran a check, uh, a scan on it to see which one. So my evaporative and my catalytic converter tests were not complete, so it failed. Uh, now I'm here, I have only one item that's not passing and that's the EVAP system. It turned green, but then I immediately got like a check engine light because I think my purge valve is going bad or I need to clean it out. So for right now, I've got one, uh, one, one not ready light. And in the state of Texas, you can have only one, no more than one at the not ready. If it failed, that's different but not ready, they'll allow only one. And so I checked with them and they said, yeah, that's true. So if I only have one not ready, then I should get a pass today. So let's uh, let's keep our fingers crossed. All right, buddy, I've passed. Major milestone accomplished here. Now I can get this car registered and I can drive it, although I plan on redoing the engine. So this is just a major formality that I needed to handle. But it's done, so now I can drive this car with proper license plates and then work on the engine. So let's keep this party going, man. Okay, well, here we are again. Well, I hope you enjoyed that short video. I just wanted to show you what's involved in getting a car inspected. As you can see, it's not a whole lot. You just gotta have a windshield mirror well, you don't have to have a windshield. You just need to have a, a mirror and windshield wipers. But I thought it was important that you, that you saw some of the things that were involved with cleaning this car. The, the frunk especially was just horrible. I just couldn't leave it like that forever. Well, I did say once we're done that I would back Pepper up into the garage to get her ready for the major project, which is the engine removal and refresh. So that's next in Yogi's Garage. But for now, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down, but tell me why. At the very least, subscribe to my channel because I can't keep this project going without your support. So thanks for watching Yogi's Garage. We'll see you next time.
Yo, yo, microphone check, make it a microphone check Give it a microphone, I make the make it a microphone dead Don't step to me newbie, I could truly be moody I could have played the bridge in the movies I've been a part-time shadow cat, part-time That is not a guy that I would ever want to try